Hi everyone, this is Muay Thai Digest, and today we will talk about strength and conditioning training and physical body preparation in Thai boxing. Watch this video till the end and you will know, do we really need such exercise like jogging and skipping rope in our Muay Thai routine training? You will be surprised how many variations of abs exercises you have in your arsenal, which exercises should be must for every training or even every day, how to improve power and speed of your punch with some exercises, how many different types of strength program of training do we have and how to use it in your Muay Thai training and also you will know some new information about stretching and get program for stretching just several seconds before we start and I want to remind you several important things first Muay Thai and kickboxing at home course it's a full home training program for Muay Thai preparing where you can get a lot of exercises and ready to use program to prepare your body or keep your Muay Thai skills for future so get this course link in the description description and in the first pin comment. Second one, my telegram with unique articles and illustrated guides for training and some advices. Link in the screen, in the description and in the first pin comment. Third, short weekly trainings from my Instagram Fight Vision Project. Link also in description and in the first pin comment. And number four, don't forget about Sean Answers, our new section where you can answer any question about Muay Thai MMA self-defense to Sean Douglas, professional trainer and fighter with epic background. Okay, let's get started. So let's talk about strength training. Strength training in martial arts has become a must. The principles of strength training are not the same way those for fitness training. Every resistance training is based on functional movements. Big muscles are useless. Our muscular structure needs to be powerful, flexible and fast. A proper strength program is built as follows. Basic strength, speed training, combined strength and speed training including flexibility, endurance strength training and tendon training, a new way of training for fighters. It is important for you to know that strength training has developed a specialized way to work out and improve the quality of fighting skills. Muay Thai used to be a competition-oriented sport with the same character as K1 fighting. The brother of Muay Thai in Burma, today called Myanmar, is still competing in tournament style. Today we approach fighting in a professional way and compare all we do with other sports with specific background. Traditional training consists of a technical section, bag workout, pad workout and sparring. The same things are trained over and over again. Everything was built on routine, but training only with routine will make it impossible to reach the top of the fighting world these days. The following methods are used in training, duration training, interval training, speed workout, power and strength workout, tactical training, circuit training and periodical planning. So Wadika, Coach Sean Douglas here for some more answers uh, for Fight Vision. Um, running. Is running important for Muay Thai? Is it necessary? I say yes it is. Um, especially in Thailand we're always putting in road work. Road work is, you know, we boxers have been doing road work um, for many, many moons. I know a lot of the new fighters now take a bit of a different approach and don't put the long runs in, but I truly believe it's very important to run consistently. Um, it helps control your weight. It definitely uh, builds a bit of strength in your legs, um, which is very important and while you're in the ring competing. Um, and also mindset, you know, it's really like moving meditation. Um, you know, it's, it's really important to do that and it, and it warms the body up before heavy sessions. So it's a great way to warm your body up, to loosen up your body before you get into sessions. In Thailand, again, we're running mornings and evenings. Um, mornings are a bit longer, usually anywhere from like six to 10K. And then the afternoons, a bit shorter runs, anywhere from three to 5K. So yeah, I hope that helps. Skipping ropes are important tools for condition training. The rope has been used in boxing for as long as we know. In the gym you can find many different ropes, such as plastic speed ropes, leather with different handles and so on. Yes, yeah, skipping rope is uh, also something we use quite often. In Thailand you see a lot of the boxers skip um, if it, there's a bit of rain or the weather. Um, a bit old school, they don't need to go out in that rain and run. 
um, sick, so they'll stay, you know, undercover and they will skip. They'll skip up to 45 minutes. And the ropes that we're using are quite heavy. It's almost like a garden hose. Very heavy rope. It's not like a speed rope. It also helps with your timing, coordination, footwork, shoulder and arm conditioning, grip strength, all these kind of things. Um, yeah, and it also, you know, it works you, um, works your cardio a bit. Um, so there's a lot of benefits to skipping the rope. You don't really need a lot of space to use it. It's quite easy to take around with you anywhere, skip. So uh, you can skip in intervals. You can like, you know, really push the rope fast and then slow it down. That kind of simulates uh, a little bit of what's going on in the ring. So yes, uh, skipping is very important for boxing. Endurance training is the method to improve uptake of oxygen, lactic acid spooling and resolving that problem, liquid intake control, recuperation during active phase, stress control during activity, emotional control and determination to win. What about interval training? This method has many ways of interpretation and presentation. A few examples of this way training are normal interval 15-13 seconds full power, 30 seconds recuperation, fast interval 15 seconds full and 15 rest and slow interval 30 seconds fast one minute slow intervals are good for training power in active phase speed and fast power actions intervals are physical forms of training once lactate levels and the best way to go fast from one biostatic phase non-oxidative to oxidative to the other without cramps of side effects this way of training motivates better breathing and careful planning for how divide power over a series of rounds speed workouts these are practiced with and without resistance. The resistance is the weight of elastic band and spring, water or other such things. The most important part of this training is knowing proper technical execution and good ways to use resistance. And of course you need good coach. Power and strength training workouts. This training goes for the maximum level of intensity. Training with weights is a short session, but every series of muscle group is strained at the maximum weight level. A power and strength workout under resistance on the back or pads is done with the assistance of a person who supports the movements and controls the purity of the technique. Tactical training is important of anyone training in martial arts. Tactical training also improves a person's daily performance skills skills in life. It's important to predict the next step of an opponent and learn to oversee a situation and plan for your next moves. Tactical training is a strongly depend upon one's abilities and conditioning. An example of how this works is when a slow starter competes against a fast starter. The slow starters must warm up thoroughly and start fast or concentrate on moving through the ring, so the fast starter has to run after him. Circuit training is a fun for both recreation and competition. During circuit training, a participant moves from one exercise to the next. Each station, in the meaning of element of circuit, has specific introductions that must be followed. Good example of circuit is peg workout for 3 minutes boxing, 3 minutes kicking, 3 minutes boxing and kicking, 3 minutes knees and 3 minutes everything combined. Actually, in Fight Vision Udemy course, you can find several programs of circuit training with this bag workout. Don't forget to check it, especially if you don't have trainer for these days. After each 3 minutes, the person moves to the next station. A trainer circulates the hall and instructs each person individually while the rest continue to the workout. In the beginning, use an interval of 1 or more minutes to move from one station to the next and rest. And what about periodical planning? This style is often is combined with tactical training and is determined by the season. A year is divided in seasons that depend upon when a fighter has to compete and on the level of weight. A good example for periodical training or planning is a weight increase of 5 kg to be promoted into another weight class. It is not only important to increase weight but also keep dry body mass, not lose speed, increase power and regain your fighting level. Periodical training or planning must take place at least one time every 3 or 4 years. But anyway, don't forget that in competition fitness versus techniques, techniques are win. In the old days, when a fight fell into the hands of tight judges, you Usually the most technically sound fighter received the decision, all the points are still awarded. 
Okay, guys, um, some of the must-have exercises in Muay Thai. You know, with no equipment necessary, some of the, the most necessary exercises would be push-ups, sit-ups, um, squats, squat jumps. Um, these are really just important exercises you see in, in all boxing. We do quite a few sit-ups daily, you know, anywhere from three to 500, um, you know, through, through two sessions in a day. Um, usually there's around 10 to 20 push-ups between each round through like a traditional uh, Thai boxing workout. So, you know, a bag, some bag work and then right on the whistle or the break, you'll drop down and do your push-ups and then a bit of a rest and then back into the next rounds. And that goes on throughout the entire session. So I would say um, a lot of you know, old school sit-ups and uh, push-ups and squat jumps because the foundation needs to be really strong. Those legs need to be strong. So I hope that helps. Abdominal muscles, as the other group of muscles, should be functional and not only aesthetic and beautiful. So you need your muscles to use and not to just show. And in your arsenal for training, you have a rich choice of abs exercises. Not only boring crunches that I'm sure you know, but also crunches on a bench if you have such an equipment, crunches on a boxing bag. Just try once and you will see if your abdominal muscles are ready or not. Also, you can use some group exercises like this one. It looks easy, but it's not, because all your colleagues also should do this exercise in the same tempo, and the group tempo is not the same as a personal tempo. Just try this one with your friends in the gym, and you will know what really means teamwork. Also push-ups. It can be simple, or you can upgrade it with some benches, or some of your training partners can help you and make it much more harder, like this. Is there any exercises or things you can do to help with your your power punching or your power in general? I would say a lot of foundation work. A lot of the power comes from, from the legs or from the floor up. Um, and also proper technique. Um, really, it's a lot to have to do with the technique. So the better your technique is, I believe the uh, stronger you can punch or kick um, or throw your tools. Um, especially you know, for striking so I would say the technique over everything and then of course heavy bag work is one of the um, things we use to help uh, develop a bit more power the heavy bags you know, can be um, utilized that way but yeah foundation um, good technique and if we're looking at a piece of equipment or something to assist us in that uh, heavy bag work and now let's talk about chin-ups okay guys uh, now I teach you some uh, exercise with bar. Uh, it's uh, important, it can help you a lot uh, when you're fighting. So it's uh, good to, to train uh, with bar for Muay Thai. Okay, next question, stretching, is it necessary? Do you need it in Muay Thai? Um, when I arrived to Thailand many years ago, I didn't see a lot of stretching. Um, the guys would come in off the runs, they'd shadow box a bit and they'd get right into the pad work. So I was quite um, shocked that there wasn't a lot of stretching. Nowadays, you see a lot more stretching in the gyms. Um, I believe stretching is really beneficial um, to prevent injuries. Obviously being flexible is a huge benefit um, because you can, you know, you can kick the head and, and um, again, it, it's, it prevents injuries the more flexibility I believe you have. So I would definitely take the time to stretch. Um, it can be very basic stretching. Of course, you want your body warm before you get into stretching. Um, so that's usually good to do just after the run. But um, yeah, traditionally speaking, and years ago, I didn't see a lot of stretching in the gym, like I said before, but um, 
yes, I think you should definitely uh, implement stretching. Where uh, on your body? Just start easy, it for ready? And make it slow.
Toss the feet. Under over. Lay back. When I say pop, we pop up and then we drop and drop down. Ready? Pop. Drop. Pop drop. Pop drop. Pop drop. Pop drop. Pop drop. Pop, drop. Pop, drop. Pop and hold. Pop and hold. Stay up, 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 feet up. Excellent. Straight the legs. Feet up. Drop. Pop, drop. Pop, drop. Pop and hold. Hold, hold, hold. Feet up, feet up, legs straight. Feet up guys, let's go. Up, 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 up. Breathe into the nose, out to the mouth.